And speaking of which, you guys won't believe what I saw when I looked into Vortesha the next morning. Still no signs of leaf nests. And not much has changed at the food station. But as I looked closer, something peculiar caught my eye in the shadows. What is that? OMG! Look who's decided to come out and play! It's an absolute pleasure to meet you, your royal highness. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon. Welcome to the AC family. Enjoy. The canopy of Vertesha's rains greeted the morning sun, refreshing the lands with a hydrating shower that I programmed in this fully automated, climate-controlled setup and home to our new colony of Asian weaver ants. The water would make these tropical lands wonderfully moist and humid for the ants, who by lifestyle naturally live in these tropical trees. Like treetop Amazons, weaver ants are an arboreal species, native to Southeast Asia, where I currently live. But it seems all this wonderful humidity and heat has caused someone special to emerge out into the open for us, AC family. A weaver ant queen. Isn't she just stunning? A worker tenderly begins to feed the queen food stored in her social stomach. This is called trophallaxis. It's also how ants feed each other and distribute food to all members of the colony, as you can see here. But look at how gorgeous this queen is! How much bigger she is than the workers! And how spectacular her yellowish green color is! We'll be able to get a better look at her in a bit. I watched curiously as the queen began to sort of tap her middle feet. What she's doing here, I have no idea. I'm sure weaver ant society and culture is far more complex than we humans assume. And indeed, you guys are about to discover just how incredible and intricate weaver ant society actually is in this video today, as well as how they deal with outside threats. But no spoilers. All of that craziness is coming up later, so keep on watching until the end. But meanwhile, you may be asking yourself, so is this the queen of our new weaver ant colony? Well, here's what I think. So in case you're just joining us, our weaver ant colony of reportedly 500 workers or so in this container is still in the process of moving into this great terrarium we built in the past episode. An ant kingdom terrarium we call the Canopy of Vortesha. It's a great space perfectly designed for the weaver ants, with lots of leaves for the ants to build their nests in. As a high-tech climate-controlled space which matches conditions outside, it's outfitted with its own heating, lighting, and rain system. But I believe this queen here is not the official queen of the colony, but rather a daughter of the main queen. Let's name her Princess Emeralda. Princess Emeralda is a virgin queen elate and the humid territories of Vortesha have likely caused her to emerge from the nest in the container, as she probably thinks it's nuptial flight time, i.e. time to mate. Sorry, Princess, not quite yet. But guys, little did I know Princess Emeralda here would be the one to show us something totally amazing that I know you guys will love. From within the shadows, a worker emerges wandering confidently across the Vortesian forest floor, where she is on the hunt for some food. She climbs the scattered moss beds and decaying wood, searching high and low for goodies the colony might need. Weaver ants, though nesting high up in the trees, do spend a lot of time on the ground as well, foraging for food like insects or small dead animals or even sweets. This worker here will not stop until she finds something of interest. The well-being of her colony depends on her persistence. Another crew of ants are busy searching the mid-levels of the territories, in the areas where the light of the treetops meet the darkness of the forest floor. 
We can't leave any area unchecked now, can we? The workers use their antennae and their excellent vision to locate food in their surroundings. I also think at this point, the colony is still mapping out the lands, as I imagine Vortesha is still largely unfamiliar territory. But this worker gains word of a party happening just above the treetops. High up on the feeding platform, a feast is happening, as a crowd of ants relish the sweet cup of honey-flavored beetle jelly. They gorge themselves of this delectable jelly, filling their social stomachs so they can return to the main colony and start distributing the food via trophallaxis. I just loved watching the workers tearing at the jelly and indulging themselves on our food offering. Actually, this beetle jelly was supposed to be a bribe to get the ants interested in moving into Vortesha and out of their current container. It was day two and the ants still hadn't moved in to Vortesha creating their famous treetop leaf nests. I was just dying to see them create these incredible nests using silk produced by their larvae as an adhesive to keep everything sticking together. But from the looks of things, it did seem like the ants were still in the scouting phase, shopping for ideal real estate, before choosing a location to officially move and start the nest construction. I was in no rush though, as I had decided that it would be best to allow the ants to move in on their own schedule. And it did seem like the weaver ants were warming up to Vortesha quickly. I couldn't help but allow my imagination to run wild. Guessing where in these territories the ants would eventually choose to build their leaf nests. It seemed like anywhere here would have been an ideal location. But I'm no weaver ant, and I haven't the slightest clue as to how they decide which leaf or branch is the one and what exactly they're looking for in an ideal branch or grouping of leaves. But I knew they would eventually come to a collective decision on the best location for their nest. And when they did, I was determined to film the entire process. Which plant do you guys think they'll nest in? Leave your guesses in the comments and we'll see who's right. As for now though, the ants seem to be super territorial over their newfound beetle jelly sugar source and the workers are well aware of my presence whenever I come near. They have extraordinary vision and are on guard and ready with jaws open, antennae outstretched, and gaster cocked to spray formic acid should I draw near. There, there, my lady. I won't hurt you, nor touch your beetle jelly. <laughs> oh, before I forget, guys, please take a moment to vote in this poll here for an official name for this weaver ant colony based on suggestions provided by you, the AC family, in our last video. Thank you, AC Council, for your input. I'll be announcing their official name in our next episode. Overall, I could sense that any day now, the colony would be moving in sooner than we expect. And AC family, that's exactly what ended up happening. But not in the way that you, nor I, were thinking. I woke up before sunrise and returned to Vortesha to check up on the weaver ants. Princess Emeralda was walking along one of the rain pipes. I couldn't believe her beauty. Just look at how gorgeous and majestic she was up close. She's an absolutely massive ant at just under an inch long. Though our princess here is a combination of browns and greens, Asian weaver ant queens can actually vary in color from neon green to bright yellow to brown to even gorgeous hues of blues and reds. In my books, weaver ant queens are truly one of the most beautiful queen ants in the world. But something seems to have captured our princess's attention. She smells something, something that is interesting her greatly. She makes a U-turn and starts heading in the opposite direction, guided by an entourage of workers who seem to be urging her somewhere. Hmm, something's up. The ants seem to be acting a bit strange. What on earth are they doing? I felt as though something was about to happen. Something big. I noticed some of the ants moved around quickly, as if they were extra excited about something. Okay. Now, AC family, are you ready for this? I looked around the territories carefully, trying to see if there was anything new, anything different or out of the ordinary, and soon, I was quite surprised to notice this here. There! It was a grouping of weaver ants! OMG! No way! 
Could this be happening? I believe the Weaver Ants have officially chosen a spot to nest build. Yes, the ants were in the process of moving in. Now, I wasn't 100% sure about this, but it did look like the ants were pretty fond of this sheltered area between the leaves of this Schefflera plant. Alrighty, C family. This was about to get really interesting. I also noticed that the ants were traveling to this sheltered site from other areas of the territories, which were great signs that this site was a place of great interest. It seemed like some ants volunteered to be living markers, ushers, standing in place to help guide traffic of ants that I assumed would be coming when the move was well underway. Some ants were traveling back to the colony in the container, probably in hopes to convince the rest of the colony that, hey guys, you gotta trust me on this. We found the perfect spot to build our new home. Pick up the kids, inform the queen, and let's move out. Perhaps easier said than done though, because for a move to officially happen, it would take at least a considerable handful of ants to agree to the moving campaign and eventually win the majority of the colony before any move happens. But when I look back at the site, look who had showed us that she had cast her vote on the moving issue. It seems the ants had convinced Princess Emeralda that this was going to be the site of their future home. OMG! I was so excited! Princess Emeralda's presence here told me that for sure this was a chosen site to build their weaver ant leaf nest. So cool! And suddenly, there was a rumbling in the lands. Wait a sec. Oh no! The morning vortex rains had arrived in Vortesha. I was so scared these rains were going to freak the ants out and make the ants change their mind or deter them from initiating their great move. I watched the ants religiously until the rains came to an end. And just like that, the rain ceased and the ants, seemingly unfazed, began to clean themselves. Okay, this was good. It seemed the ants weren't deterred by the rains. And though the lands were a bit wet, I guess they were used to the rain by now. It's actually rainy season currently where I live. So these ants should feel right at home in it. But just in case, if they were to move in today, I decided to program the next rains to skip the night and I rescheduled for their next vortex to arrive tomorrow instead. Oh, I just couldn't wait to finally see these weaver ants build their long-awaited leaf nests. But AC family, I was certainly not prepared to see what I saw next. And guys, I hate to say this, but it's not good news. Little did I know, up ahead, I was about to do the craziest thing I've ever had to do in the history of the Antiverse. Brace yourselves, AC family. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Later that afternoon, I visited Vortesha to check up on the ants. Had they moved in yet? No. The small group was still camped out, but there was no huge colony moving in from the container. It was then that a tiny movement caught my eye. Wait a sec. What was that? Was that what I thought it was? No, it couldn't be. I must be dreaming. We got rid of the pharaoh ant's mother nest a long time ago and removed them from the ant room. It was then that my camera caught sight of a pharaoh ant climbing its way up the beetle jelly cup. What? I couldn't believe my eyes. A pharaoh ant came to drink from the jelly and soon another appeared on the scene. They were pharaoh ant scouts. They must have broken in to claim the sweet beetle jelly and the entire canopy of Vortesha. In case you don't know these pharaoh ants, they are the thieves and murderers of the ant room, with a tendency to kill and conquer entire ant kingdoms, as we saw in a video two weeks ago, with a particular taste for new and emerging ant colonies. The pharaoh ants were quick to evade oncoming weaver ants, but I could tell the weaver ants could sense there were intruders in their midst and they began to patrol the area. And soon, it wasn't long before the weaver ants finally discovered the pharaoh ant's presence. There, the weaver ant took a quick bite and immediately communicated to her sisters that there were indeed trespassers. And at second contact, the weaver ant ferociously slashed her mandibles, taking powerful bites at the smaller pharaoh ant. These weaver ants weren't going to allow pharaoh ants to steal their jelly. The pharaoh ants scurried about in a panic, but I knew inside 
from past experience with these nefarious trespassers. It was only a matter of time before these scouts would be returning to their super colony and inviting a huge feral ant swarm to conquer these lands. I just couldn't let this happen, not to our beloved new weaver ants. They were just about to claim these territories theirs. This was a bad time for a pharaoh ant invasion. And sure enough, upon closer inspection, more and more pharaoh ant scouts had already infiltrated Vortesha. This was such bad news. Although it seemed the weaver ants could effectively defend their jelly and territory now, I don't think this would hold true once the pharaoh ant swarm arrives. The Weaver Ants needed its full armed forces to take on the arrival of a mass Pharaoh Ant invasion, which I knew was imminent. And it seemed as though the Weaver Ants were truly taking their time to move in, which could be super dangerous, seeing as if the Pharaoh Ants were to arrive in swarm and conquer these lands before the Weaver Ants settle in. Not only would the Weaver Ants lose this lush territory and source of nourishment, but they'd also be in danger of becoming food to the Pharaoh Ants. I just couldn't let this happen. And so, AC family, I had no choice but to make the toughest decision of my life and resort to something extreme that I knew was physically dangerous and just all around hazardous. Desperate times call for desperate measures, AC family. I waited for the dark of night. This was going to be the craziest thing I've ever done in my life. I looked up at the container containing some 500 aggressive weaver ants. This was going to be the craziest thing I've ever done in my life. I put on my protective gloves. This was going to be the craziest thing I've ever done in my life. I detached the tube from the container and plugged both openings with cotton. This was going to be the craziest thing I've ever done in my life. All for the war against these pharaoh ants. I looked at the canopy of Vortesha and unlocked the front panels of the territories to open it up. My god, this was going to be the craziest thing I've ever done in my life. I unlocked the container, one side and then the other, and then all was set. It was time. This was the craziest thing I've ever done in my life. One, two, Three. I popped open the container and with the help of a friend threw all its contents into Vortesha as quickly as I could. They came pouring out and to my surprise there weren't just 500 workers. The colony was easily a couple thousands. I shut the door trying to ignore the excruciating pain of stinging weaver ants all over my arms. I turned the key to lock the weaver ants in. It was a painful venture but before I knew it they were in. Thousands of weaver ants scrambled up the vines and spread out into the dense expanse and foliage of Vortesha. I was awestruck, watching them carpet all landmarks of what was now going to officially be their kingdom. I stood speechless at the sight and couldn't look away as the mighty weaver ants rushed all areas of Vortesian territory. It was a marvelous sight to behold, seeing all the weaver ants filling the territories. But what I saw next truly moved my soul. Look, a pupa. The ants have started to move in the brood, which means tonight, AC family, the weaver ants begin the official move and construction of a leaf nest. At last. This was going to be epic. <laughs> AC family, it's all just crazy. Did you enjoy today's part two of our Weaver Ant Trilogy celebration of three million subs? Guys, the Weaver Ants are finally going to be constructing their leaf nests in next week's episode. And you surely won't want to miss how cool the entire process is. So be sure to smash that subscribe button and bell icon for notifications now so you don't miss out on this continuing ant story. And don't forget to hit the like button every single time, including now. 
it would really help a lot. Speaking of ants, it's officially nuptial flight season in the Northern Hemisphere, and a lot of you are catching queen ants now. And in case you didn't know, we've got all the top of the line ant keeping gear for you ant keepers at all levels, from beginner to advanced, as well as a ton of new and exciting products for the ant keeping community, not available anywhere else. So head on over to antcanada.com and browse our shop. We ship worldwide and offer full email support if you need us. We also have ant colonies with a queen available in most regions. So go check us out and pick up your ant farm kit and ant gear today. If you're new to the channel and want to catch up on all your Ants Canada lore, feel free to binge watch this complete storyline playlist here, which traces the origins of all the ant colonies of the ant room, so you can follow their stories and better appreciate how these ant kingdoms came to be and why we love them so much. AC Inner Colony, I have left a hidden cookie for you here if you'd like to see a hidden teaser video of next week's episode. Scenes of the ants exploring Vortesha for the first time. It will blow your mind, guys. So do check out that hidden video. And now it's time for the AC question of the week. Last week we asked, what do weaver ants use to glue leaves together when making their leaf nests? Congratulations to Meg Ant Lover, who correctly answered, they use the silk from their larvae. Congratulations, Meg Ant Lover. You just won a free ebook handbook from our shop. In this week's AC question of the week, we ask, what color can a weaver ant queen be? Leave your answer in the comment section and you could also win a free ebook handbook from our shop. Hope you can subscribe to the channel as we upload every Saturday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please remember to like, comment, share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video to help us keep making more. It's ant love forever.